Cool. Um, but yeah, Peter, I haven't seen you for a while. Uh, you know, I think last time we spoke, you took the last in-person class that we had in San Jose, which was April of 2019 or something. But yeah, I would love to hear what you've been up to since then. Yeah, no problem. Um, things are going great. I'm really glad I took the, uh, the class. Uh, as that met you and your dad and uh, Jonathan, I've taken many classes and even worked at a different trading uh, academy. And uh, there was always this one piece I was missing. And uh, your dad was able to uh, help me see where I didn't have my strategies in place um, from charting to viewing the time frames. And uh, the bonus for me was the uh, wrinkle charts. And uh, still trying to wrap my head around Elliott Ways. Uh, I profess I need to uh, review my notes on that. But other than that, it's been great. Um, I didn't really get really active shortly thereafter. I needed to kind of let things settle in my head and, and kind of review my notes. Um, so the account, was about 107,000 in December. And right now, as of today, it's about almost 200,000. And wow. uh, I give a lot of credit to what I've got from the class and implementing the, uh, the techniques and strategies. Wow, uh, December of 2019, is that correct? Yeah, the account was only 107 at the time. Uh, right now I'm pegging about almost 200. Wow. Um, would love to hear more about basically your growth in your account and, and the strategies you use and, and how you got there. Yeah, well, um, the funny thing is it started with uh, Pacific Gas and Electric. Um, I don't know if you all have been following it, but they had went into some kind of bankruptcy thing in, uh, I don't know, December, January. And so um, it kind of piqued my interest saying, well, you know, utility companies don't really disappear. So... It was a relatively cheap underlining stock price, you know, at about three or four dollars. I can't remember now. So I started to dabble that one trade and instantly made a couple hundred. So I would say that was the spark that ignited this uh, whole trading thing since then. Um, the funny thing is, in uh, February, I had a uh, ruptured appendicitis. So I was in the hospital with my cell phone lying in bed with an IV tube. <laughs> And I was trading daily while at the hospital. There wasn't anything else to do. So it, it really took off from there. Got it, got it. Um, cool, and, and so can you tell us a little more about kind of your strategies in terms of uh, you know, your entries and exits and things like that? Because I know you mentioned that you've basically hit a point where you're now pretty unemotional with trading and you're very- Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think the key takeaway from the class was to look at a longer time range. I mean, look at a longer time frame chart. My error back then was I was looking too close. And if a stock's moving up, that, that chart looks great. But when it starts to go against you and you keep going, banging your head against it, you don't know why. And then you back up and zoom and go, oh my God, we're hitting previous highs. So it's very important for me now to drill down. I will look at any stock ticker you give me from 10 years down to three years, down to one year, down to six months, down to three months, down to 20 days. And then when I'm ready to execute, I'll look at a one day, five minute chart. And by the way, thank you for that one, uh, Tim. Yep. Yep. Definitely. That's, that's what you got to do, right? So many people, they're just looking in that micro time frame and once you zoom out, like, like what you've done, you're able to see that holistic bird's eye view. Now you're on top looking down versus being in the chaos. Yes. Uh, and if you're looking in too close, uh, you're, not, you're not getting the full context or a whole picture of where you need to be, where you need to get out, where you need to get in. Uh, it's very important. I mean, I had people say, hey, we're on a downtrend, and I'm looking at the time frame, then looking at the one-day chart. And, you know, with volatility these days with stocks, one could interpret that we're in a downtrend. But when you zoom out, you go, oh, no, we're just, we're still on an uptrend. Yep, 100%. And it's, it's one of those things that sounds so, 
it's very easy to miss, you know. That was that was part of my uh, 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 par problem before I took the classes, is negating to zoom out and go, okay, uh, you know, this is where we're at, this is where we're headed. Um, is this a buy zone or is this a sell zone? And uh, that's a that's a huge, huge uh, breakthrough for me. Awesome, awesome. Uh, um, yeah, I would love to hear advice you have for new traders in terms of like looking to be more rules based and, and less emotional and, and yeah absolutely uh, so you gotta have a trading plan uh i've heard it for a long time and it's only recently that i've come to appreciate that you have to lay down some very concrete rules that fits your tolerance my rules are not going to be the same as your rules uh everybody's going to have different objectives uh, everybody's going to be working with different size accounts. And so the rules are your rules that allow you to be comfortable, unemotional when you're engaging in trading. If you're trading and you've got a butterfly, you know, uh, in your stomach or you're worried you can't sleep, there's something wrong. And usually it goes back to improper size positioning. Uh, you've dove into a trade way more than you can stomach and handle. And you're gonna be subject and vulnerable to emotional uh, emotions taking over your decisions rather than be clear and objective as to what the chart is telling me. I look at the charts and basically it's very simple. Are they buying or are they selling hard? And I need to execute appropriately. As we all know, we're all going through the pandemic. Uh, and um, in March, uh, I was laid off and like everybody, you know, sent home shelter in place. And um, basically, uh, I day traded every day when the market was open. And uh, thank God that I have that skill set because other than that, you know, there was no other source of income per se. And uh, I would encourage everybody to um, develop this, evolve it. I'm still evolving every day. Uh, one can never say, they, the moment you say you, you got this and you know it all, uh, <laughs> yep. uh, that, that means your, your head is too big for, for uh, the size of the room. And, you know, I, I also monitor myself and say, you know what, if I'm getting kind of giddy uh, and fat headed, it's time for me to take a break. Uh, I just know my own personality. And now that I've gotten that, it's helped me to just uh, approach this thing with the coolest, clearest, calm approach. And um, it, it really does make a difference. Yeah, I mean, hey, the results speak for themselves, right? You basically more than doubled your account size of 100K to a little over 200 in eight months, um, primarily swing trading uh, and day trading, right? Yeah, um, I'm not a, uh, 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 a one-dimensional trader. Uh, I could be a day trader in an instance. I could be a swing trader as well. It all depends on the underlining and, and, and what I'm seeing. Uh, for example, like yesterday, uh, executed a day trade. Uh, basically, uh, I scaled in. And that's another thing I wanna share with uh, new traders. Scale in. There's no need to jump in all at once, no matter how much you love what you see in the chart. Because the chart is a guide. There's not a guarantee that says, okay, this is it. So I've been finding that scaling in the position really helps because I can't guess the lowest price as I enter. And if I enter a portion and I see that it's cheaper, well, I'm glad I left some money on the side to buy a cheaper set. And if it continues to have a little bit of a, a more of a dip, I'll scale in a little more. Now I've got my full position. And uh, that does help a lot. I wanna share that scaling. So yesterday at 7.07 .07 a.m., I scaled into one position. At 7.08, I scaled a little more. And then at 7.10, I decided to scale my last piece. Uh, by 9.41 a.m., I sold the entire lot 
and the gross was $13,253.54. I have my trade confirmations to support this claim. Um, I looked at that and go, wow, that was 150 minutes of work. And I did the math, uh, Tim. It comes down to $5,301 per hour, or $88.25 per minute, or $1.47 per second. So when somebody tells me, give me a minute, I say, well, that's roughly about 80 to $100. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I saw your, you sent it to me on a post. So I, I saw that trade you took, which is pretty crazy. 13K and uh, two hours. Well, you know, we could be uh, fair and say, well, you know, a full workday is typically eight hours. So let me share you with this metrics. If it's an eight hour day, uh, using the same trade here, even though it only took 150 minutes, but let's just spread it over eight hours like a typical, you know, workday of regular people. You know, you're looking at $1,656 an hour or $27.61 a minute or 46 cents a second. I don't <laughs> think you guys would be too uh, disappointed if we, uh, you know, did it that way. Yep, yep. <laughs> hey, I mean, you're, you're crushing it. You have your rules in place, your risk management in place, and you know your your entries are uh, precisely on point. And same with your technical analysis. So, yeah, I I do want to say, you know, uh, we are all human beings. Um, no matter you know the rules that we declare, I will profess it is easier said than done. I mean, when the trade is evolving, and whether it's going with you or against you. I gotta tell you, your emotions are your worst enemy or your fears or your uh, lack of conviction, even your confidence gets worn. I mean, this is a battle of, with yourself really. And so sometimes you just gotta get either mechanical about it by putting a mechanical stop loss and just walk away. Yep, yep. And I think it's good for people to know uh, you've actually been trading for a while now. And so I know you've had different ups and downs and things like that. But uh, yeah, this, this has definitely been a journey for you. Um, just so, you know, anyone who's watching out there knows, you know, Peter has been trading for, uh, for a while now, even before our class, so. That's absolutely correct. And um, Tim, that's why I was so grateful and thankful that I found Stock Navigators on Facebook and I reached out to, uh, to you initially and we met and thank you for allowing me to to, to do that. And, uh, you know, I could have easily said, you know, I've taken classes, not another one, but this was the missing piece for me. Uh, because your dad's story uh, touched minds the same thing. I, I've gone through many mentors and, and followed many other traders. And it was just, I don't know, it was just was, there was something missing. And, and, even though, you know, you and I have discussed, well, you know, a lot of class is going to be basics, but you know what? I'm really glad I reviewed the basics because there were a lot of hidden things there that maybe when a younger version of me was like, yeah, yeah, okay, whatever. But no, I mean, just Dow theory, you know, higher highs, higher lows or lower lows and lower highs. I mean, that's, that's, that's important when you're looking at a chart. And so, I would urge anybody who is experienced or inexperienced to not take for granted uh, the basics of, of the uh, trading rules and, and information that you know, is being shared here. Yeah, definitely. There's, you know, that the basics fundamental part of our program, and then there's the advanced side as well. And hundred percent, like you said, even, even me realistically, like sometimes it's easy to think like, oh, I understand candlesticks and you know trend and all this quote unquote. But um, you know, when you do it for a while, sometimes you forget and you need a refresher. Like, okay, you know, this bullish engulfing candle is actually the signal to enter uh, versus just because you look at the candlesticks so much, you kind of forget different signals and things like that as well or confirmations. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, when you're live trading, Tim, and I and I will profess, you know. Uh, we've all learned to buy the buy zone, right? But, you know, say, for example, like a stock like Tesla, when it was in the hundreds and, and, and the shorts were getting squeezed. I mean, you can open up a one-day five-minute five chart 
And if you're seeing that green arrow skyrocketing, you're not going to wait for a pullback. You got to decide, okay, I'm jumping on because this thing is moving away and it's moving at such a velocity that I felt confident that even if I paid higher than what I wanted to, I knew I was going to make money, especially as a day trader scalper with options leverage or even just stocks. I, I you know, uh, you have to be flexible to what you're seeing and what's unfolding before you and be objective. Now, if you don't have that, then don't do the trade. My thing is, you know, if I miss a trade, it's okay. There's going to be another trade around the corner. Yep. You know, one other thing, Tim, um, there are two regrets whenever you execute a trade. Uh, one is, darn, I sold too early. I left a lot of money on the table. That's one regret. The second regret is, darn, I should have sold and locked in some profit. Now it's turned into a loser. If I had to choose between two of those regrets, I always choose the first one. That's a solid way to frame it, 100%. Cool. Um, what kind of advice do you have for people who are on the edge of, or even for our program, for those out there who are you know, on the edge looking to sign up? I would say um, it's not for everyone. But if you feel like this is something that you want to explore and give yourself a chance, I would encourage you to take the leap. Um, I am so glad I took the leap. Yeah, it's not been an easy road, but I can tell you right now, uh, it, it's pretty goddamn awesome. Awesome. And I think that's, you couldn't have framed it in a better way, realistically. So, um, yeah, any last minute items you want to share with uh, new traders, things like that, lessons you've learned? Because uh, I know, I mean, you've just had a, a killer eight months, so would love to hear more about it. Well, I would say um, be truthful to yourself. Uh, good trade, bad trade, you got to be the one that takes the accountability. Uh, whenever I find myself in a funk, you know, if I have, you know, I mean, I have losing trades too. Uh, don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm only human. And if I start to see that pattern, then I go, okay, there is something wrong with my analogy or I'm not looking at this thing properly. Uh, I need to take a break and, and, and let that sort out. Uh, there are mornings when um, I wake up and I'm just sleepy. I'm not gonna trade because I gotta be a hundred plus percent uh, uh, doing this. And, and you know, even to, sometimes when you're a hundred percent, you might have a, a, a day that's going against you. And that's just where you have to uh, do uh, risk management. Uh, I've always come from the rule of whatever your total account size is, try not to let each trade eat more than 1% of your total account. Because if you stop that leak at 1%, at least you've got 99 other tries to, to regain that 1%. But if you let it overrun you at 10 15, 20%, it's harder to, to recoup that, that portion than the original 1%. Now, recently, I will say, I've got a, a different management thing that I want to share is how to manage a trade that's highly profitable. And this is what I call profit management rather than risk management, because no sense in seeing a trade go up just to come all the way back to break even and even a, a small loss, that, that is the worst feeling. It's like, why did I even bother? What, you know, I'm, I'm trading for the objective to make money, right? And so if you don't have profit management to at least say, hey, I'm up 200% and this thing has run up 50%. Okay, I'm gonna give it 25 more percent and we're done. The problem with a, a new trader like myself, and I, I'm speaking from experience, is when you've got a winning trade, a home run, you're going to fall in love with that stock. I, I, I'm sorry, you're gonna. And that's a mistake. Don't fall in love with your trade because here's the secret. Your trade doesn't love you back. <laughs> <laughs> wise words, wise words. I, I can't agree more. You're going to end up taking hundreds of trades, if not more in a lifetime. And no one trade should rear anything. It's bad. Agree. <laughs> cool. 
Um, no, I mean, I, that's all the questions I had for you, Peter. I, I think this is super helpful for anyone new that's out there or, you know, who's even trading currently shared some of the, you know, the struggles that, that you've learned to overcome and things like that as well. So thanks so much for taking the time to, to do this call. Oh, you're very welcome. And, and here's a kicker surprise, guys. Um, I don't have a six screen or two screen computer laptop setup. I've been doing it all on my iPhone, guys. I'm so lazy. I just wake up and lie in bed, and I execute my trade horizontally. <laughs> um, I find that mastering using my iPhone allows me the best thing, portability. I could be at work. I could be shopping. I could be at home. Um, anything you know my phone is is my tool and uh oh speaking of what guys uh i do have a normal job uh i work at town mazda at redwood city come see me i'm, I'm uncle peter uh i'm an internet car salesperson sorry this is my shameless plug but uh <laughs> love to meet y'all okay yeah no thanks so much for sharing your story peter and uh you know i, I think it's going to help a ton of traders so well, trade well, trade safe, guys. Uh, yeah, stay in touch. We always love to hear uh, student success, and uh, especially since you're one of the last in-person students as well. So it's awesome to see how, how far you've come. Please thank your dad, uh, Jonathan, and, and you again, Tim. Will do. Thanks again, Peter. Appreciate it. Bye-bye.